Good afternoon, everyone. It's Hirsch Wilson, and today is uh, Thursday, April 2nd. I want to continue our conversation about resilience, but to start, I thought I'd um, share with you some advice I read yesterday online about personal protection, and that is this. If you hold two glasses of wine, it's really difficult to touch your face. So highly recommend it. Good strategy for the evenings and even the afternoons. So let's talk about resilience. Resilience is defined as the ability to bounce back from difficult times or difficult events. It has nothing to do with the fact that we are experiencing difficult events, but it's how we respond to them. To, to the extent that we can bounce back quickly from those kinds of situations is really what resilience is all about. Last time we talked, I mentioned that there were six, I think six practices that could really help us develop our resilience. And again, this is based on a paper by Margaret Hagland and Nicole Cooper, and it was primarily directed at first responders on how they can help protect themselves from what we call acute stress disorder and PTSD. But they're very relevant to us. So last time we talked, uh, we, we overviewed two strategies. So now I want to add two more. And the first one, and both of these are commonsensical. There's no mystery to them, but they're very effective. And the first one is exercise. Uh, people who are highly resilient tend to exercise. It doesn't mean going to the gym every day and working out for you know, two hours. It can be as simple as that walk every day, uh, getting your pulse rate up for half an hour, for 45 minutes. Why is this important? Well, we know a couple things. We know that uh, physical exercise builds physical hardiness, but it also builds emotional hardiness. We get tougher both physically and emotionally, and that's why exercise is important. Plus, it releases endorphins, which for a short time makes us feel better. So you can institute a regular exercise program, especially now in these times. It's really important to help you stay less stressed and be more resilient. The next practice uh, I want to talk about is something that's very familiar to firefighters, and that's humor. Highly resilient people tend to find humor in sometimes the most dark and chaotic of situations. On the fire service, it's how we bounce back from difficult calls, how we bounce back from the, the routine daily calls, the sick calls, the man down calls, is by humor. Uh, we, we often don't share our humor, except amongst the brothers and sisters on the fire department, but we look for those situations that, that lend themselves to humor. And it's important for a couple reasons. First of all, having a sense of humor really keeps you balanced and on keel. It keeps you from falling off the cliff into depression and into nihilism. The other thing it does, it really builds community. When we can share situations, when we can laugh together, uh, when we can collectively see the absurdity in what we commonly do, it really bonds us and keeps us close. So my two practices for today are one, exercise, really important. Second, the ability to find humor in, in, in the darkness and the chaos that we're currently going through. Okay, so next time we'll discuss three more practices about how to be more resilient. But I wanna to close today with something I talked about earlier on. I think part of uh, being mature in this situation is living with no illusions and understanding what we called before, really kind of accepting the brutal facts of the situation. And uh, two things come to mind. In New Mexico, we have a population of maybe 1.2, 1.3 million people. And last Monday, the unemployment office got over 500,000 calls in one day of people applying for unemployment insurance. A staggering number, and it kind of colors the situation we're in. We're facing uh, an economic tsunami. I think the second thing that strikes me as just fact is pandemic itself. We, we've only seen the beginning of it, and it's gonna be something that we're gonna be living with for a long time. So accepting those brutal facts, accepting that this is what is true now, is really an important part of living with no illusions. So what do we do? The most important thing to do is not wish for this all to go away, for not wish it was different, but to really wish for and, and practice and plan and work on being emotionally tougher because that's how we're going to get through this individually, is by being emotionally tough. I had the opportunity a couple of decades ago to go through an Outward Bound course. One of the things you learn on Outward Bound is that everybody's 
very enthusiastic when they begin. And we put, you put on those big packs, they're 80 pounds, you start hiking, and everybody starts off with a, a brisk pace, excited to get into the adventure. And after about 15 minutes, when you realize how heavy that pack is, everybody slows down and you realize it's going to be a slog. It's going to be difficult. And climbing and climbing and climbing just gets more and more tiring. And that's kind of the situation we're in, I think. We're in a slog. You learn, uh, just take a step at a time, step after step. You don't look up. You just keep one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. And for us, it's the same thing. We are day to day now. We are get through this day. What are the most important things I can do to take care of my, myself, take care of my family today, and then move on to the next day? It's ambiguous. It's uncertain. We're not sure what the future holds. But all we can do every day is take that one step at a time, go forward, go forward, go forward. So until next time, be safe, wash your hands. Remember, two glasses of wine keeps you from touching your face. Highly recommend it. And we'll see you soon.